This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Westmoreland residents march for peace. With 124 murders committed across Westmoreland since January, stakeholders in the parish on Thursday held a peace march in Savannah Lamar. Lyndon Johnson, chairman of the Westmoreland Neighborhood Watch Group, said law-abiding citizens are fed up of the mounting incidents of murder in the parish. Johnson expressed the disappointment that members from the 10 churches invited to support the initiative did not show up. However, he noted that the more than three dozen citizens, including the Custos of Westmoreland, Bishop Hartley Perrin, were enough to make a positive impact on the lives of the youth in the parish. At the same time, Bishop O'Neill Russell, pastor of the Ark of the Covenant Holy Trinity Church, urged the residents of Hudson and the Darling Streets in the capital to resolve their disputes through dialogue instead of resorting to the use of guns. Joan Graham, a senior citizen of Hudson Street, welcomed the peace march but said the problem of the parish's crime must not be blamed entirely on the youth but on the system of governance and the distribution of the country's assets such as land which has left out young people. Suspected case of suicide involving elderly Manchester woman the police in Manchester are investigating a case of suspected suicide involving an elderly woman. She has been identified as 68-year-old Winifred Cameron of a New Forest address in the parish. The police's corporate communications unit confirmed that Cameron's body was seen hanging from a tree in her yard around 6 o'clock Wednesday morning. She was reportedly last seen alive around 9 p.m. on Tuesday. Investigations into Cameron's death are ongoing. Vandals damaged stoplight at Chesterfield Drive. The National Works Agency is advising motorists to exercise caution at the intersection of Chesterfield Drive and Marcus Garvey Drive in St. Andrew as the traffic signals are out of service due to vandalism. Manager Communication and Customer Services at the NWA, Stephen Shaw, says the critical cables that are necessary for the traffic signals to function have been deliberately burnt by fire. He says that this is the second time in the last two weeks that the system has been vandalized. Shaw says that the latest act of vandalism has done extensive damage to the traffic signal. He explains that while the repair cost has not yet been determined, it is expected to be significant. Mechanic charged for machete attack A Trelawney mechanic has been charged with wounding with intent and unlawful wounding following a dispute with two persons. He is 43-year-old Junior Lewis of Jacksontown in the parish. The police say around 9 a.m. on October 5, Lewis and the complainants had an argument when he used the machete to chop one of them. He also injured the other complainant. Lewis then fled the scene and both the complainants were taken to a hospital where they were treated. A report was made to the police and Lewis was arrested and charged on Tuesday after he was pointed out by one of the complainants. Indicom concerned as another fatal shooting reported. Placard bearing residents of Elliston District in Manchester protested over Tuesday's shooting death of 31-year-old Audley Walker during a police military operation while the Independent Commission of Investigations has expressed the concern over the number of fatal shootings involving the security forces in October. Assistant Commissioner of Indicom, Hamish Campbell, said that this latest incident brings to 20 the number of fatal shootings for this month thus far. All fatal shootings concern Indicom, and we obviously have a responsibility to investigate them. The level of fatal shootings is always high, but this month has seen a particularly large increase when that is not what we were expecting or wishing to see, he told the news on Wednesday. A report from the Jamaica Constabulary Forces Communication Unit said in the latest incident, Walker was fatally shot in a confrontation with the police about 5.55 a.m. and a 9 mm handgun seized in Elliston. Residents who gathered on the Spurtree Main Road on Wednesday claimed the Walker, otherwise called the Shabo, was awoken from his sleep and killed. A relative told the news that Walker was reporting to the police on a condition of bail for rape following an alleged incident in 2013. 
We need some answers. The police them claim he was wanted, but at the same time, two days ago they stopped him and searched him. Why didn't you take him in at the same time? He reported at the Black River Police Station every Saturday and Wednesday, said Elletstone resident Tanisha Grant. He died in his underpants, she added. Grant has meanwhile questioned the police's report. Where is the gun? Where is his body? Nobody can give us information, said Grant. Renee Walker, sister of the deceased, claimed her brother was killed in cold blood. The police came with the intention of killing. My brother was sleeping in his underwear in his room, and two shots were fired. He got one. They did not state if he was deceased on the scene. He was shot from 4 o'clock and was there until minutes to 7 a.m., so my brother was bleeding out for three hours, she said. She added that the police targeted the homes of her family in the early morning operation. They secured four homes and raided them simultaneously. At 4 o'clock, my brother was shot. At 5.14, the home that I was staying in was knocked down by police, who didn't identify themselves. They said, open the door. We know there no in there. They searched the house and the property. They took the person they were searching for. They didn't find any guns, she said. She added that several of her family members were detained by the police. She said her brother has been staying mostly indoors since a shooting incident in Elletstown on October 14, which left one man dead and another wounded. Once my brother hear about police, he go run. My brother now sleep with gun. There was an incident that happened two weeks ago at the bottom of our community, and there have been a lot of police coming into the area. So from my brother see them, he is not staying on the road. He is staying in his house, she said. Ministry team visits Oberlin High following disturbance. A team from the Ministry of Education on Thursday met with students and the staff of Oberlin High School in St. Andrew following a disturbance the previous day during general devotion. There were chaotic scenes at the institution Wednesday after scores of students became disoriented and fainted. It was reported that this happened when a teacher was given the opportunity to share a word and a prayer for the students. Education Minister Favall Williams said that the ministry's team has been seeking to restore calm at the institution to reassure the student population as well as the teaching population that the school will operate in a safe manner. The Ministry of Education has directed the school leaders to develop protocols for devotions as it continues to investigate the incident at Oberlin High. Mrs. Williams said while the ministry is supportive of religious practices in schools, administrators should be extremely careful of the content the students are exposed to. We have our education officer or regional director um, on their way there, there, if not already there this morning, to speak with students, to hear from students, to reassure uh, the student population as well as the teaching population um, that you know the school will operate and we will operate in a safe manner for our students. These are students in our care. We act in their parents' stead as soon as their parents drop them off on the school compound, and that's by law. So we have to be extremely, extremely careful about what it is uh, uh, that they are exposed to. We have to ensure that um, their physical body is not harmed, is not um, overly involved. There, you know, you don't have ceremonies where they have to prostrate on the ground or anything like that. Um, those are some of the, the things I am thinking about and we are discussing when we talk about protocols for devotion. Four people charged after police seized a firearm and ammo in Kingston. Four people, including a female, were arrested and charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition following the seizure of a firearm and several rounds of ammunition on Monday, October 17, charged are 20-year-old Shanti Witton of Grants Penn St. Andrew, a 17-year-old boy of Last Street, Kingston, a 16-year-old student of Providence Lane, Kingston 5, and a 27-year-old Jamar Ingram, a taxi operator of East Street, Kingston. Reports from the Hunts Bay Police are that about 10.20 p.m., lawmen intercepted a Nissan Adwagon motor car on Spanish Town Road in Kingston 11. The vehicle was searched, which resulted in the seizure of a Browning single-action 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 11 rounds of ammunition. The four were subsequently charged.
Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.